Today I wanted to talk to you about one of my favorite special effects makeup products of all times and of course I'm talking about Sculpt Gel by Mold Life. This is an on-skin silicone which you can create amazing special effects with and I wanted to talk to you about what you should do with the package when it arrives at your house what products you need to work with Sculpt Gel and of course how to use it. So if you're interested in everything about Sculpt Gel, please keep watching because I will explain it to you step by step in the coming video. The first thing you want to do when your Sculpt Gel arrives is get a permanent marker and mark all the lids of the jars with the corresponding letter so you know which lid goes on which pot. You want to mark the lids with the corresponding letters because you don't want the chemical reaction setting off in the jars because you put the wrong lid on the wrong pot. So if you put the lid of part B on the pot of part A, the chemical reaction which sets the silicone also starts in the pot and well you don't want to throw away a good set of sculpt gel of course so just mark it and make sure you always put the lids back on the right pots. There you go and this is the preparation you need to do when your sculpt gel arrives. When you want to work with the Sculpt Gel, there are of course also a few things you need. One is a container you can mix the Sculpt Gel in before applying it to your skin. And the second thing I would definitely recommend is a box of wooden tongue depressors. I use these to scoop the Sculpt Gel out of the jars they come in to put them in the jar I want to mix them in and what I do is mark these with the A, the B and the C as well so I am sure that I won't use the wrong tongue depressor in the wrong jar. And then it's time to work with the Sculpt Gel. Well, how does Sculpt Gel work? Parts A and B form the silicone so if you mix these two the chemical reaction starts and you will definitely get your silicone. Uh, but there is also a part C in the set of Sculpt Gel and this one is a softener. It makes the silicone more flexible and makes it longer lasting when you put it on skin that moves a lot. So around your mouth or in your neck you want the Sculpt Gel to be able to move more with your skin than be a firm silicone. That way it will be on your skin longer than when you don't add part C. I always mix all three together just to use all of it in the same time. So not that A and B are empty and I still have a full C. That's just a waste of money in my head. But in theory you could just mix A and B on places like your forehead or your nose. The only thing that is an argument for not using C is that it takes a bit longer for the silicone to set when you also use part C. So if this would take five minutes to cure it would take seven or eight minutes with part C. Sometimes that is exactly what you want because you want the time to make something beautiful but I could imagine that sometimes you want to work quick and you don't want to have that extra time and then you would only use part A and B. For today's video I'm going to use equal parts of A, B and C to show you how to work with the Sculpt Gel. When you open up the Sculpt Gel you see a firm nice looking paste and I just scoop out a bit. You don't have to weigh this it's just by eye. Just when it looks like around the same amount you are okay. Part B is a different color so you can definitely keep them apart. I'm just gonna put a bit in the jar as well. I think I could use just a tiny bit more. And there is C. It's clear as you can see and um, a bit thinner than part A and B. When you have all the parts in your cup you get a stainless steel spatula and just mix them very well. And when they are properly mixed you get a light skin toned color to your Sculpt Gel. To work with it you can just apply it directly on the skin but if you want it to hold extra well you could first clean your skin with alcohol. I will do this quickly. I know I usually don't do this for my YouTube videos but if I would go out 
wearing scalp gel, I would definitely first clean my skin to get rid of all the uh, skin oils that could um, prevent the scalp gel from holding to my skin. I am using 99% alcohol for this. We sell it at our store and um, well, it's the highest percentage I can get. So I'm just cleaning my cheek for this. As you can see, I'm wearing makeup. And once this is done, you can just start applying the scalp gel directly to your skin. I'm going to make a simple cut wound on my cheek just to show you the basics. I've got a lot of YouTube videos using scalp gel, so browse these if you want more inspiration on what you could make with scalp gel. But for this quick how-to video, I think a small wound would be best. So you just start applying a layer of scalp gel. It doesn't really do what you want it to do, but it's just applying a basic layer. If you want to make high, big stuff on your skin with Sculpt Gel, you should work in layers. So just make a base for what you want to create and just work it up layer by layer. So let it set and just apply a new layer once the first one is done. I think this could be big enough, or I could even make it bigger. Like a real big cut wound on my cheek. So as you can see, the sculpture really wants to stick to my spatula. And as it does, I can't really work the scalp gel into the shape I want it to be. So I'm going to clean my spatula with alcohol and put some alcohol on the spatula so I can shape the scalp gel. I use tissues to clean my spatula. So I am dipping the spatula in alcohol and this will prevent the scalp gel from sticking to my spatula. You need to do this a few times because when the alcohol evaporates it will again stick to your spatula. And now I can go and clean out the edges of the scalp gel. So the thinner the edge is the less you will see of the scalp gel being on your skin. Before I will make the wound, I want a skin texture to the skull gel to make it more convincing as skin instead of a even layer of silicone. I have a stipple sponge to do this with. I've put it through the alcohol as well. Otherwise the skull gel will definitely stick to this sponge and I will just stipple on the texture of this sponge on my skin. Once you feel you're happy, you can get your spatula again and make the wound. And once you think you're done with your wound, you need to take the time to let it set. So go and uh, play a video game on your phone or just check Facebook or watch a YouTube video and give it a few minutes to set. And then the moment comes when you wonder if your scalp gel has set and if you are ready to continue your work. Well, the worst thing you could do is go and touch the work you have created on your skin because if it hasn't set, you will definitely ruin what you have created. So you will get the jar again, which you use to mix the scalp gel in. As you can see, I have a lot left over. So I definitely mixed too much for what I wanted to create. Uh, but you can touch this to test if the scalp gel has completely set and if it's safe to work. Well, as you can see, this is very sticky and it is almost set. I can still kind of change what it looks like. So I need to wait about a minute or so and then I can definitely continue this makeup. And then the moment comes when you can continue your work on your skin and the scalp gel has completely set. Well, what I always do is get a color set powder by Meron or setting powder by Meron and just get rid of the shininess of this scalp gel. Silicone is 
shiny by nature and when you powder it you get rid of most of the shininess that is in the scalp gel so i'm taking a kabuki brush and just some color set powder and gently brush it onto the scalp gel and if you are a frequent viewer of our youtube channel you probably know that i always use too much setting powder so i always turn out completely white and just brush away any powder that is on there that is too much and there you have it the set sculpt gel as you can see i can safely touch it and it won't go anywhere uh, until i decide to remove it if you haven't blended the edges of your sculpt gel to your skin properly you would definitely see these by now um, if that's the case just keep practicing as the more you do it the easier it gets to get a nice edge from scalp gel to skin well coloring it you could do this with grease paint but i definitely prefer coloring scalp gel with alcohol activated makeup so that's what i'm going to do today i'm going to get the skin cover up palette by anchor and color the skin tone part i don't need to color a lot of it because i'm very light colored and the scalp gel is that as well but i'm definitely going to try to make it just a bit more natural I'm going to show you two techniques you could use the alcohol activated makeup with. The first one is a foundation sponge. They are the triangle sponges you can buy at our store and uh, use for grease paints but also for the alcohol activated makeup. So I don't want a square on my face. I've told you before, again if you are a frequent viewer of our YouTube channel, I usually pluck these to give it a nice texture and don't get all those little squares on my skin and then you will just get this sponge into the alcohol and activate the makeup with it so i'm going to take the reddish reddish tone first and just softly apply it to my skin and the scalp gel so i want that blush back that i have on this side the scalp gel definitely takes that away a bit So that is the first technique with the sponge. The second one is with the special effects makeup brushes. I'm using these a lot lately and I actually am very in love with them. These are by Titanic FX and we sell them at our store as well. And you can stipple with these brushes. And the big advantage in these comparing to the sponges is that you can work more precise on your skin. So uh, it's smaller and it's just more detailed than the sponge. And there I'm basically happy with the coloring for the skin tone. Now I'm going to continue to the wound and I'm going to use the SFX palette also by Encore to do this. There it is. It's just the basic special effects palette. So you've got all the basic colors and just a few blood tones and also some skin color tones to make your skin a bit more reddish um, i'm gonna start out with a light red color just to color the inside of the entire wound and i'm gonna use a really small brush to do this just because the wound has very small beginning and small ending and i don't want to get out of the wound at all And there it is, basically bright red. I'm going to continue to a darker red in the same palette. And that is it for the coloring. Then I like to add blood to my wound, of course. And I usually use a thick blood in the wound, so it will stay there and it will stay as beautiful as I want it to be. And I take a thinner blood, not a thin blood, but a slightly less thick blood, to come out of the wound well for today i have chosen a blood by makeup for film and television to stay in the wound and it is the blood gel number two light and i've got mold lives venial blood to come out of the wound as this wound is kind of small i'm going to use the same brush 
to get the blood in the wound. So this is kind of a jelly-like blood. And I'm trying not to fill it up completely so you still have that sense of depth in that wound. And that is how I use my Sculpt Gel. Well, if you are going to use Sculpt Gel and you don't want to forget anything, don't forget your wooden tongue depressors, your 99% alcohol, a stainless steel spatula, preferably your alcohol activated palette. But if you don't have the budget for these, grease paints will do just fine as well and some special effects makeup brushes. But if you can't afford these, the foundation sponge will do the trick just as well. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video, of course. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel in the link below to stay tuned on all the how-to videos we are gonna upload to this YouTube channel. And of course, our special effects makeup tutorials. We also have face painting tutorials, by the way. Well, for now, I wish you a pleasant day. And of course, I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.